Hey everybody, today I am doing something a little different than usual. I have gotten over the years people asking me, you know, who are your favorite actors or, you know, what are some of your great favorite performances? I'm just gonna do a video or a couple videos on this. So what I decided to do was do maybe my top five favorite performances that have been done by females and then five done by males and I'll do them in separate videos. Today obviously, as you can see, <laughs> the, the title is going to be females. Keep in mind this is today. This, you know, this could change in a month. This could change in a year. It could change in a week. Who knows? But just as of now, as of today, these are the performances that I've thought of that just really I love and they're very moving to me. And these top five are in no particular order. I'm going to start with one that I think is very underrated, one that you don't hear about very often, but it's a performance by Lisbeth Moovin. Uh, and she plays Anne in Day of Wrath, which is a film from 1943 directed by one of the greats, Carl Dreyer. Dreyer, to me, has created this macabre, very twisted, dark, gothic feel to his films that, to me, goes unparalleled. The imagery is very sharp, very dramatic, very bold, but he's able to contrast that with very subtle and nuanced performances. That's part of why the balance works, and a lot of it, I think, is because he comes from the silent era, so a lot of his films are very influenced by silent films, so he never... He uses very sparse dialogue, and he just has this ability to be able to work with people. I, and uh, Lisbeth who is Anne in this film, the uh, main female character, is to me one of the best performances in any of his films. It's all in her face. She has everything just through her eyes and through her expressions, and she is so captivating, but in such a subtle way. It's a very modern performance. I think it works just as well today as it did in 1943. It translates extremely well. As a character, this woman, she's living in the 1600s, which is, you know, the era of witchcraft and a lot of oppression, especially for females. And uh, she's forced to marry this older man who she's just not, she doesn't really love at all. Um, but this older man has a son, and as soon as they meet, they are immediately attracted to each other. You can see the inner torment and the oppression just in her body language and in her face. Uh, she's got almost, she has like an innocence about her, it seems, but the more you kind of look at her, she's got these eyes that have like a mischievous and um, kind of sexual quality. There are moments in the film where she can just look at somebody and it's just, it's a very intense, very seductive feel. And that to me is why it works so well. And as I said, Dreyer's films have a lot of imagery, a lot of great imagery that sticks with you in the films. And to me, I mean, just Google her character and just look at that face and it it's just always stuck with me no matter what. Next, I'm gonna choose an actress in a performance that is almost the opposite of this one. It is Betty Davis as Margot Channing in All About Eve from 1950, I believe. This is a very operatic, very grand performance that you would see might do really well on the stage, I think. And uh, All About Eve, to me, is one of the great movies ever written under the Hollywood system. And the character of Margot Channing is a character that a lot of people have compared to the actress herself, Betty Davis. A lot of people say that she is quite like that character. She's a very bombastic personality. She's also that aging stage diva. And that's sort of something that's become a cliche, of course, you know, the aging actress who misses when she had a lot of her fame and glory. But Betty Davis is astounding in this film. It's just ridiculous the amount of charisma she has. She just commands every scene and every line with such control and, and confidence. But what I think works so well about her character and why it has aged so well through the years is because of just the way that she portrays her. I mean, you know, she comes off as this character that is very demanding and difficult and, you know, your typical kind of melodramatic uh, diva, but really that's just a cover-up for all of her insecurities. She really is a victim of what, sadly, we're still dealing with today, the idea that she's getting too old and she's not getting the same kind of roles that she used to. And she's starting to recognize that her acting days are numbered, but she's also very torn between her career, and then, as she puts it in the film, being a woman. Uh, she has a uh, somebody that she's deeply in love with in the film, and she's trying to decide, well, you know, should I keep going and, and, and doing what I love to do, but maybe there's a part of me that kind of wants to live a life of a woman and, and do something that I've never done before, which is be maybe more traditional. She's definitely at a crossroads in this film, um, but you know, as I said, she she kills it. She kills every moment of the film. She's very artful in the way that she enunciates her words. It's very Shakespearean, her style. I don't really know much about uh, Betty Davis's stage work or if she did any Shakespeare, but I think she's perfect for it. Um, it's almost musical in the way that she performs. Very kind of old-fashioned, but 
um, classic style of acting that with that artful way of speaking. And my next performance on the list is one that's similar to Betty Davis's in that it's by a very famous actress who was a bit older when she did the film, but this is Katherine Hepburn in The Lion in Winter. When I think of people that just as actors have more charisma than they know what to do with, it's it's Katherine Hepburn. She just, she had it. She had star quality. It's the quintessential character that she played that is very strong-willed, very independent, and has a lot of authority, or most authority, over pretty much every aspect of the film, a lot of the different characters, more than they realize. When she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Peter O'Toole in the film, he plays her husband, uh, King Henry II, um, and it's just a very interesting relationship because, you know, she's jealous of him, yet she really loves him intensely, and you can tell. There are parts of her, I think, that really hate him, yet she admires him. So it's all very intriguing. It's like, it reminds me a lot of, like, Shakespeare's Caesar and Cleopatra. And speaking of Shakespeare, I know that, I know for a fact that um, Catherine Hepburn did do a lot of Shakespeare, and I'm sure it was amazing. For those of us who were too young and were not able to see her when she was at her peak. I think this is probably the closest you can come to seeing her really do something that is in the style of Shakespeare. Next on my list is Giulietta Messina, and this is from Knights of Cabiria, directed by Federico Fellini. And this performance is not... it's very different than anything I've ever seen before, particularly from a female it's certainly one of the most bold performances I've ever seen. It was a very physical performance. It's very comedic and quirky, yet there's a lot of depth to it. Messina, the actress, was Fellini's wife and also his muse. And I think that she really embodies everything that he stood for as an artist. With Fellini, there's something very personal and uh, powerful going on in his films, but it's all delivered in this very cheeky, way, and a lot of his characters are almost cartoon-like. And that's the thing with, with Kabiria as a character, it's like she's almost part mime with the way she does her makeup. She has these very accented eyebrows and this lipstick, and she's like Charlie Chaplin's The Tramp in that she can make you laugh one minute and then another moment she can make you cry, make you feel so much for her. It's really hard to be able to have that range, that versatility as an actress, but yet she's really able to deliver that really gut-wrenching, dark, sense of the character, because the character herself is one that does go through a lot of pain and loneliness. And I don't want to give away anything about what happens at the end, but I will say at the end there is this image of her face that to me is honestly one of the most moving things I've ever seen in a movie, or one of the most moving performances, and it just it makes me melt every time I see it. It is just... It's the perfect ending. And last but not least, I'm going to go with a silent performance. This is Louise Brooks playing Lulu in Pandora's Box. And this was directed by G.W. Pabst and it came out in the 20s. And I have to say there's something, to me, acting in a silent film is almost harder than it is to be in a film where you have dialogue because there's it's the lack of distraction. You can't cover up your performance with what you're saying. You have to have it all in your face. You have to feel something deep within and be able to convey it just with your expressions. Not so easy. And that was my problem with films like The Artist, I think that came out in 2011 or something like that, uh, which was that film that was kind of that novelty film that won Best Picture at the Oscars. I never felt from the main two actors, I mean they did fine, they did a fine job, but I never felt like they were able to convey what their characters were feeling through their eyes. They were just very like, ha ha, aren't we cute doing our silent films? They just, they didn't feel it to me in the way that some of the silent actors did from the era. And Louise Brooks was one of those people because, you know, back in, in the 20s and, and beforehand, a lot of people thought, well, because we're not speaking, we have to give very grand gestures and very, you know, lots of very over the top uh, expressions. And she, did the opposite. She did everything like Lisbeth Movin in, in Day of Wrath, what I mentioned at the beginning, very much introverted performances. She wanted the audience to kind of come to her rather than being the person that's like, hey, look at me acting. She's also one of the sexiest actresses I've ever seen, which is perfect for this character because that's who she's playing. She's kind of playing the ultimate temptress. And again, this is just a role that was tailor-made for her. She was born to play it. In order to be in this film and to be what ties all of these characters together, uh, you have to have something that is very magnetic about you. And she does. She has this kind of childlike quality to her, but yet there's also this sense of mystery that keeps you on edge all the time. Everything, every little um, raised eyebrow or kind of smirk she had 
was just perfect. It had meaning behind it. Yeah, I just, I don't think anybody could have played this part better. But yeah, those are my five performances today that have really affected me over the years and ones that have just really stuck with me. So I will do another video at some point uh, uh, for five performances by males. And I think that one's going to be pretty tough, but I'll try to do that soon. Thank you everybody for listening. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, the link is below. And you can also like my Facebook page in the link below that. Catch you next time.